Hello you lovely people and welcome. Today we are back with some live action. I've got a new clamp thing for my phone. So now you have a top down instead of an awkward angle in. Uh, today's subject um, is going to be quite a big project for me. Um, got three models to build in total for it. And it's supersonic airliner. Simple as that, really. Um, so I'm going to do a quick kit review of the re-released um, Airfix Concord. Now, I believe this is based on the original concept. Two reasons for this. One was BOAC airline livery, and two... Um, the more bullet-shaped nose and lack of windows in the visor. Now, the original Concorde concept had no windows at all in the visor. It was just going to be side windows. And then when the uh, nose dropped, or the irritatingly called droop snoot. Droop snoot? Droop snoot? Yeah, the, the snoot would droop. The snoot droop. Um, if once it dropped... For landing, uh, you'd obviously have the two uh, forward-facing cockpit windows. But there is some lovely uh, box art on the front, and it would have looked nice in the BOAC colours. Um, would have looked nice sat next to the BOAC VC-10 at Duxford, if I'm honest. Um, so, my plan for this... Uh, actually, I'll come to it in a minute. We'll do the uh, instruction booklet. So it's still your normal paper, colour call out for the decals and paintwork, of which there's just white paint. Um, and then basically two stages of putting together. It's very simplistic. Um, as you can see, you've got your two fuselage halves. It's actually got the clear plastic windows in this uh, invariant. I know uh, Revel, when they released their, their Concorde kit, it had the holes for the windows, but no uh, clear plastic for the, the actual windows themselves. So Airfix has gone one better. Um, it's also got the clear windows uh, for the sides. Um, the configuration for the um, the windows um, on the version that I'm going to do um, will, um, like I say, I'll show you in a minute, is not like the original commercial Concorde and it's not this um, actual uh, concept version. Uh, it's a, it's a based on prototype 002, uh, which was flown out of Filton back in the day. Um, and has a very different um, nose configuration to any of the other, even the uh, pre-production and the commercial Concorde. So um, just something I've chosen to do a little bit different. And then underneath we've got the simplistic undercarriage, no details in the bays or anything. Don't expect much for 1 to 144 scale. Um, and the engines are just a couple of... Uh, Fan um, faces in some uh, solid trays, basically. Um, uh, another thing, uh, this version, the both the pre-production and the um, prototype Concords. Their Olympus engines reverse thrust was completely different to the commercial ones. If you've ever go to Duxford or I think Bravo Sierra Saratango is at the Fleet Air Arm Museum at Yeovilton. If you look at the engines, when you get to the back, um, if you're above the wing, if you're lucky enough to be above the wing, you'll see some grating um, just before the exhaust. Uh, both top and bottom, um, and then you'll notice that the um, the 
can at the back is actually solid, whereas the um, commercial built ones uh, had the uh, reverse thrust buckets like uh, the Tornado. Um, I didn't actually notice this until I went to Duxford recently to take my son to the Concorde and um, it completely blew my mind. Um, looking, If you look into engines 1 and 2 at the back, um, they've actually got the thr thrust, reverse, thrust reversers activated and it's a bit like, um, how can I put it, like the Saab Vigan, uh, that sort of set up with the closed can at the back inside and then obviously the reverse thrust coming out of the holes at the sides but um, just interesting to see the different steps that Concorde went through on its, uh, on its journey to being a fully fledged um, jet. I mean even the size difference, the pre-production and uh, prototype are actually a little bit smaller and I believe the wings are slightly smaller as well. Um, and it will show in the models as well, obviously. So let's, let's finish this. Um, so like I say, and it comes with the um, BOAC markings. It would have been nice if Airfix had actually included the prototype markings for it. Um, I, I mean, I'm all up for a what-if scheme, but I think it would have been a bit more popular if they'd actually had the prototype decals, which is... Um, Bit of a shame, but you know, they did what they did. Um, so let's go on to the kit itself. Um, actually, now we'll look at the decals quickly. So you've got the wraparound for the nose section here and here. Obviously, you've got union flags there, BOAC to go on the tail sections. Um, I'm guessing you'll have to actually paint the tail the correct colour. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a, a decal of such to put on the tail. Just the wrap around for the nose and the, the line that goes down the side. Another thing that I don't understand is that they give you clear plastic for the windows, yet they give you decals for the windows. And these are square. That's not right. Anybody who knows the Comet will know square windows are bad but they do give you uh, silver uh, framing for the windows so if you do go for the actual clear plastic instead of filling the holes in you've got a choice of putting in uh, deckled windows or frames to go over the top of them which I guess is a nice feature um, and they're really nice decals actually uh, really really nicely printed so uh, let's get like I say get onto the kit itself this thing is uh, pretty old um, so the molds wouldn't have been great when they decided to um, re-release it but you know uh, any way to gain as much as they can out of one molding as possible uh, so I'm expecting quite a lot of flashing in this as long as it's not as thick as the actual plastic itself I don't mind Right, so um, so the fuselage itself. So as you can see, uh, with the, the visor up, you can see, uh, well, you can't actually, probably won't be able to see, but on the actual plastic itself, um, we have some raised panel lining, and that marks out the visor, um, which is from there to there. Um, obviously, no window markings. Uh, these are your side cockpit windows, and you've got why they've oh, they're giving you a separate door to glue in. I don't know. And you've got the little square windows, and your your wing slot there, and then the tail. On the inside, it's pretty much as you would expect. You've got the pin, ejector pin markings. On that one, I need filing down on the tail because it's slightly raised. And on the other side, um, slight ridge there, nothing a little buff out one sort. And undercarriage, undercarriage bay there with nothing in it. Um, again, no real uh, detailing there. I mean, you can go all out if you wanted. And there is a uh, 
Metallic Details, I think it's called, the company. And they do a um, detailing set for the Revel version. And it's like double the price, and you get resin engines and lots of photo etch. And I guess it would make the aircraft look fantastic, but really, if you have to pay double the price for a detailing set, um, it's not really worth it. Yeah, there's a little bit of over over spill on the nose there. Um, so putting those together is going to be slightly awkward. Let's have a look. Give it a dry fit. Not even sit in the pins. Mm, it's uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit of an awkward one. As long as I've got some Tamiya clear to tack it down, that'll be good. Um, it's flashing in the window section there that. I'll need to clear out and some flashing in these windows as well. Doesn't seem too thick, which isn't too bad. Um, right, it's gone to the wings. Uh, so yeah, again, raised panel lining. Um, slight ejector pin mark there. That'll buff out though. And then you've got your wing cant is quite nice and then the underside oh uh, luckily enough I've actually got the same side that I need um, so yeah that, that'll need a little bit of a clean up to fit in there um, and some filling doesn't look like it'd be too much of an issue simple enough um, and have a look at some of the extras so uh, Guessing that's some sort of a um, uh, a bit to go in between. And this is a small cockpit section that I don't know about. Um, that's definitely a bulkhead type thing. And then you've got wheels with not very much detail in them, lots of flashing. Uh, Going to take a little bit of work. Pins through them so that they should actually roll. The round burner cans, like I was saying, uh, that will... Actually, is there any... No, I shouldn't think there's any detailing here either. So yeah, the, um, the grating, or the grilling on the Concord is along this section here uh, for the reverse thrust. Or was it just, just there, I think. So yeah, I mean... Very simplistic kit. I mean, it is an early one, a vintage kit, so you, you can't really expect too much from it. But the moulds are just... I mean, that's a door. It doesn't look like one. This thing here, a big blob, looks more like a boot. Um, some more plate in there. What's that thing? That's a door. That's a door, okay? And flashing around it is absolutely ridiculous. How thick is that? Wow. And flashing between the undercarriage. I know some people are going to say, you know what you're going to get when you buy these things. Yeah, you do, but you'd expect um, they're not exactly Airfix anymore, are they? They're owned by Hornby now. But Hornby, in their ultimate wisdom, would go in and tidy up the um, the moulds a little bit, you know, or just try and upgrade them slightly. I mean, the kit is still going for like 20 odd quid. Um, here's your clear parts, which are very nicely, very, very nicely uh, moulded. Probably the best part of the kit, actually. Very nicely, very crisp. And then take a quick look at one of the uh, engine trays yeah we've got no discernible markings on it at all it's going to take taping up and painting it and even the uh, the parts inside are filled with flash yeah I mean there won't be too much trouble um, hopefully you've got the ejector pin markings to sand out I don't know if there's a divider that goes in the engine. Let's have a quick look in the instructions. 
I thought I would have thought that the um, there'd be a bit more detail in the engine bays. Nope. 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 Just uh, stick your fan plate uh, uh, faces in and glue it in. So it's not as detailed as I thought it might be. But then again, this is the BAC Sud Concord, um, which is um, Sud Aviation, um, became Aerospatial, um, British Aircraft Corporation, obviously became British Aerospace. Um, well, merged with other companies to become British Aerospace, but um, that shows the early concept. Now, here comes the next part of the project. A company called F, De F Decal in France. That's what the F stands for. Um, they do d decals or decals, or however you want to call them. Now, I managed to get a set of uh, Bravo Sierra Sierra Tango, which is the one at um, New Vilton, the Fleet Air Arm Museum. Now, let's have a look at these. These are all um, all one big decal, so they need to be taken out. Now, these are a just a, a generic Concorde detailing set um, that goes with all of the sets that they they send out. So they actually send they actually make decals for um, the visors. Uh, obviously, this one doesn't have a proper visor, so that will be omitted, um, as will that section, and then we've got decals for the side windows and the uh, weird configuration that the bullet nose has on the um, prototype. So I'll be using those, and obviously uh, some of the markings, uh, not all of these were on the, um, on the prototype. And then onto the main, the main set. So early markings on Bravo Sierra Sierra Tango had British Aircraft Corporation and Sud Aviation France, um, and then later became Aerospatiale France British Aircraft Corporation. Now what I can do is slice that off and add these in, in place of it and have it as an early version of the prototype. Um, or I can just keep it as is um, and just stick everything on. Um, the one thing that is going to be awkward is matching this colour because on the left hand side of the tail you have a fairing here. Obviously there's no decal to go over that. So I'm going to cut the hole out of that, try and match the colour and spray it. Um, not very good at mixing colours so that will be an interesting uh, stage of the um, build and then obviously you get the instructions on where to paint it now I'm a little dis little bit disappointed that the um, the uh, wing markings aren't added for the um, prototypes um, they all had the black lines with one two three four five six seven eight nine and then on the other side they'd have like checkerboard markings and things like that this is just the completely plain version of when I think they took it to the Far East for a sales um, push. Uh, they cleaned the aircraft up. Uh, the only thing it came back with was loads of stickers in front of the uh, the door there. So, um, yeah, it's going, going to be an interesting build. I've got, I've got some Rolls-Royce decals to go on the engines which would be located on here somewhere I'm guessing yep there they are so you've got the silver set and the black set so yeah this is going to be an interesting build um, like I say it's going to be a project of three aircraft I've given away the first one um, the second one I'll do a video of soon I don't want to do too many of these because I have a feeling that there's not many people that are enjoying the videos but it's something extra that I can do, and I quite enjoy doing it, to be fair. Um, and if, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying it, I'm going to keep doing it.
So um, I'm going to tidy this mess up, but that's the um, FX prototype Concorde, um, vin vintage classic. Um, so um, I will do a work in progress video on this. Well, I may do a full build video and just speed bits up and then add it to the website and the website, the um, YouTube channel. But yeah, um, if you've got this far, thank you very much for watching. And um, I hope you found it interesting or got something from that. By the way, F Decal, very good company. Uh, decals are reasonably priced um, and the shipping's not too bad either. Um, it just takes a little while for them to cross the channel for some reason. I get things from Germany and the USA a lot quicker than I do from France. Um, but yeah, very, very highly... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Highly detailed and um, very crisp and clear markings there. Um, and very, worth every penny, I will be honest. So, um, yeah... I'll end it there. Thank you for watching, as always. I'll see you in the next one.